Would you remain standing for worship? Our worship is purely biblical. Psalms 23 to be specific. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And he goes before me. He goes before me. He's a defender behind me. Defender behind me. And because of all those things, I won't fear. I won't fear. And I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. And my cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. Can me. I won't fear. I won't fear. And when we add it all together, the psalm is this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. Because he's my comfort, he's my comfort. and he always, always holds me close. Let's sing that one more time. Come on. Get that in your spirit. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am not alone. Always guides guide me through mountains and valleys. Mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my soul. Come on, real big right here. We say this mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. Said he gives me assurance that I'll see his glory. That one day I'll see him face to face. I fear no evil. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. And he always is. Said he's right here by my side. He'll never leave me, never forsake me. So hallelujah. Your spirit lives. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk. So I will walk in your. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. Said my victory. My victory. My victory. My victory. Say your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. So I will. So I will walk in your. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. Said my victory. Come on right here and we say your. So I will, so I will walk in your say your spirit, your spirit is my victory, my victory, my victory. Your, spirit. your spirit, set the Holy Ghost inside so of me, I will 
living inside of me. I've got peace that surpasses understanding. I've got victory. Come on, everybody, say your spirit. depression say he's my comfort he's my and he always, always, always let's do it one more time everybody in the building say hallelujah, hallelujah. I am not alone <laughs> come on there's power in your declaration you speak those things because they are and we say that he's my comfort and he always holds me. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Love that song. Let's give God appreciation for this music team. God bless you. Thank you for leading us into worship. Something about that song. You know, there is a difference between the song and the sound. Always holds me close. I, I think that sometimes when you sing a song, you have to escape your situation and listen to what. Hallelujah. I am not alone. He's my comfort. Always holds me close. Always. Always, always. Did you know that you can be with people and be alone? But what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. Look at your name and say, what a privilege it is to carry not just something see you can only tell people some things but when it comes to God you can take it What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, I shouldn't have started that. Oh, what peace we often for. Oh. What needless pain we bear 
And here is why. All because we do not care. Breathe. Breathe to God in prayer. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor. First thing you're going to have to do in 2019 is be careful who you let dress you. Careful what you let them put on you. I don't care if it's a title. You, you look like you're supposed to preach. That ain't my armor. You're supposed to be a pastor. That ain't my armor. Be careful what you let people put on you. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. What, what, when that mail, I want you to get in your mind like a chain. <clears throat> okay, all of these little small chains that's heavy and it will keep the tip of a blade from being able to penetrate, right? And so he put that on and David, he girded himself uh, in his own armor and, and he went and here's what I want you to look at verse 39 and I'm gonna be paraphrasing this because I want you to get it. It's something, it's one word in there and, and, and this is what David said, I cannot go with, with your stuff for I don't have to prove myself. And he took it off. See, some of you all are going to have to take off what they put on you. So good. And, and you're going to have to stop trying to prove yourself. But it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. I want to talk on this subject today. I'm in the fight of my life. Touch everybody on your way down to your seat and touch, tell them, I, I am in the fight of my life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Is there anybody in here that has never heard of the fight between David and Goliath? I didn't think so because whether you are Christian or agnostic, whether you practice Catholicism or you're an atheist, everybody knows this story because it has warped in something more than the biblical narrative. It has become nomenclature for the underdog, yeah. right? Yeah. The big guy yeah. versus the little guy. Right. And all of us know some story, uh, whether it's in your own personal life or whether you've seen it on television, whether it's a movie, there's always this, this thing against a power and a person, yeah. right? And, and you right now sitting in this seat I don't care what degree you have. I don't care what your savings account looks like. I don't care how many stock options the company gave you. I don't care if your window is overlooking the Galleria or if you're watching online overlooking some famous park in your city or town. Everybody gets to the place where you're facing something so big that you need some help to fight it. You can be in church all of your life, and I have been. But being in church your whole life is no proof that the church has been in you your whole life. <laughs> now, I, I, let me just back up and say, for some of y'all, I know you want us to think that you were saved the day you were born. <laughs> but for some of us, we holding on by the hair on our chin. And we are so grateful to still be alive. Do I have anybody here today? I was raised in church by a mother who was raised in church. But everybody gets to that place. And for me, it was around college where I was like, do I want to keep up with this thing? I went to college and I missed a Sunday. And when you miss one, 
Two is easy. Once you miss a month, the Lord is my shepherd. I remember my mother called me and she said, boy, you better get back in church. I raised you in church. Here was my excuse. But mama, I can't find one that was like the one we was at at home. She said something to me that changed my life. She says, if you find a church like the one that was at home, then you are the same person who left home. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, you might have to try something different. <laughs> the church that I went to could fit inside of this church. Some of the things that we do were not allowed in the church that I grew up in. I was raised in a situation where we, we knew doctrine. But we didn't know the Holy Ghost. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't beat my Goliaths. I couldn't find out why I couldn't slay my giants because I kept throwing scriptures at them. But David did not defeat his giant with a scripture. And for the scripture is the sword. He defeated him with oil. See, the Holy Ghost can do things that your intellect cannot do. Anybody ever prayed under the unction of the Holy Ghost? I mean, have you really? I'm talking about had one of those prayers and the Holy Ghost come in that bathroom or that bedroom or that kitchen or wherever you start praying. And before you know it, you shouting like it's Sunday morning, crying like it's Tuesday evening. That Holy Ghost is translucent. He'll get in your car with you. You'll be at a red light shouting and praising, don't even know it turned green and people are looking at you. Wondering why you're sitting still. They understand that's what it means when the Holy Ghost arrests. He will arrest your attention. And it is my prayer today that you recognize that even though you might be small in the natural, that if you start operating in the oil that God has poured on your life, uh, your, your giants will recognize that it is not the size of your weapon for the weapons of our warfare. <laughs> are not carnal, but mighty through God. Do I have any Bible readers in here? Through the what? Pulling down of strongholds. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but of spirits of wickedness in high places. David is in the battle of his life. He has a calling but he expects it to come from the person he sees. God calls him. His father ignores him. God sanctioned him. His father left him out in a field. Now, I would, I would, I would let you know that I know how you feel. That sometimes you don't receive the accommodation the appreciation, the applause from the area you expected. But I'm here to tell you that the harvest doesn't always come from the place you sold. My wife and I were having a conversation. How many of you all have eaten an orange in the last month or two? Guarantee you it didn't come from Houston which means you don't always eat from a local harvest. The green beans you ate didn't come from here. The potatoes that you ate didn't come from here, which means sometimes in life you can feed from a seed you didn't sow. From an area you have never been. David doesn't understand at the moment that what seems to be an interrogation is actually an interview. He thinks that he has been forgotten. He thinks that he has been rejected. He thinks that he is not as important as Jesse's other seven sons. What he doesn't understand is that God has contained him, set him apart from the rest because he intends to do something with him that he's not going to do with them. And I came to tell you that the reason why 2019 has been so hard is because God intends to do something with you that he doesn't intend to do with them. And while you have seen them seem as though they have been winning all year, God says, the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but the one that endures 
to the end, and I came to tell 150 of y'all, even though tomorrow is New Year's Eve, it's still enough time for God to make this the best year. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. There is enough time for God to still make this the best year of your life. And I speak prophetically that something's getting ready to happen in the next 24 hours that's going to make the last 11 months worth it. Give your neighbor a high five and say, hold on. They that wait on the Lord. I've been waiting all year for this blessing. I've been waiting all month to find out what God is getting ready to do in my life. And eyes have not seen. Watch this. Don't ever forget this. If you, if you, if you keep a lot, how many of y'all keep notes of stuff that I say all year? Write this down. There is always, not sometimes, everybody say always. always. There is always an event that precedes an appointment. The kingdom of Israel is his appointment. The fight with Goliath is the event. And you have to survive your event in order to arrive at your appointment. That argument that you and your wife had, that was the event. 25 years marriage is the appointment. Did you hear what I said? That attack on your body, that was the event. But the testimony is the appointment. That, that, that spousal abuse was the event. But recognizing that you don't need a man to survive is the appointment. That, that, that marriage that God didn't tell you to get in, that was the event. Surviving the divorce and writing the book. Y'all not here with me today. Getting fired from your job was the event. Having a miscarriage and a stillborn baby was the event. Giving birth to the next president. God help me in this place. Was the appointment. It, that's what David said. It was good that I was a fl event. That I might know appointment. The statutes of God. Slap somebody and say you got to survive your event. Come hell or high water. You got to survive. Pain. You got to survive. Tears in your eyes. You've got to survive. File bankruptcy but still survive. <laughs> Lose your job but you got to survive. When my mother and father forsake me. In this will I be confident. Slap three people and say, you got to survive. Let them repossess the car, but don't lose your mind. Sell your furniture so that you can pay your rent, but you got to survive. Sell that necklace and those earrings so that you can start that business, but you got to survive. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Neither heights nor depths nor things to come. I'm in the fight of my life and it seems like while I'm fighting for my life my children are fighting me have you ever recognized that whenever you pick a fight with the devil then everybody that's supposed they've been still and silent and quiet and everything's going well and the moment you get ready to fight for destiny everything start acting up the dogs start barking funny the fish swim upside down everything goes crazy but Nehemiah you're going to have to stay on that wall you're going to have to watch, fight, and pray. I'm telling you because in this next season, if the only thing you can do is fight, you might as well stay here. You're going to have to be ambidextrous. You're going to have to fight and write and pray and initiate. You're going to have to do all of this at the same time because this is the year of... Oh, y'all not here with me today. This is the year of expansion. You're going to have to expand in your thought process. You're going to have to expand in your mind. You're going to have to expand. You're going to have to be able to do more than one thing at a time. You're going to have to go to Bible study and work on the same day and not just come when you off. Or you ain't going to say man, but say ouch. This is the year for you to do more. Slap your neighbor and ask him, how bad do you want it? Well, let me get on through this. The first thing you're going to have to understand, you're in the fight of your life. How many of y'all fighting right now? This is the fight of your life, am I right? You're fighting for your mind, your peace, your happiness. And how many of y'all have made up a declaration, I ain't going to let nobody mess that up. I hope y'all follow me on Instagram. I put a post up and I really mean this. I need some of y'all to change the way you pick your friends so you can stop cutting off everybody every year. 
Every year you start January, God told me to cut everybody off. Why, why are you cutting off everybody? You need to cut off your choices. Maybe this is the year for you to walk alone. David was in the field. He ain't had nobody. Everybody's escaping the field to get in the crowd, but the anointing is in the field. The anointing is in the field. You have to understand, first of all, if you're in the fight of your life, this is the first thing you're going to have to recognize. You ready? The timing of the fight. If you trace your history, you will find out that you've been fighting at the same time every year. I bet you. I bet you. If you go back and trace the arguments with your spouse, go back and check it. Y'all argue about the same time. Every year about the same stuff. I bet you if you go check your money, you start borrowing from your savings account to your checking account about the same time every year because you start running out of money and now you got to borrow from you. Every year, it's the same cycle. And what you have not yet recognized is that the devil has found out your rhythm and he shows up at the same time every year. But since you don't know the timing, you're always shocked. Everybody say the timing. The timing. Okay, let me prove it. Now watch this. The devil attacks Israel by attacking Saul because Saul has become arrogant, right? And now God demotes him. He retracts his oil. But if Saul had been paying attention, he would have known he was going to lose the oil anyway. Because when the oil came to Saul, the Bible says that Samuel brought it to him in a flask. A flask is a man-made object. When David was anointed, it was not in a flask. It came out of a horn. The horn came from the animal that God created. Notice that the people were supposed to be ruled by priests. If you don't believe me, go check the record. God gave them Eli. And after Eli, he gave them Samuel. Both of them were priests, but they looked over in Babylon and saw that they had a king. And then they asked God to give them a king because they wanted what everybody else had because they were trying to prove themselves. Y'all not listening to me. So watch what God does. He gives them what they asked for. Are you crying over what you asked? God, give me a strong man. Okay. But he ain't going to let you do what you want to do. Y'all ain't going to say man. God, give me a wife that makes money. Okay. But she ain't going to be a chef. God, I want to be a mother. Give me children. Okay. But they're going to be hard headed and greedy. So, y'all can have them. You can have them. But you're going to have to produce your own container. You're going to have to because I'm not going to give you anything to hold my oil for your choice. What God is really saying is I'm not obligated to bless your choices. I'm not obligated to protect you from what you picked. <laughs> Y'all going to say man, ouch, I need something. It's the last Sunday of the year. Give me all you got. I don't know what you're holding your amens for. This is the last one. The timing of the fight. Okay, James, watch this. So, so, so we do know that Saul right now is unstable emotionally because he has lost his oil. And he like, oh, my God, not only am I losing my oil, but I'm losing it to this kid. I'm losing it so he's unstable. David is unproven. He ain't done nothing. So I saw like. Y'all, so he killed his, so I only killed a thousand, but this unproven dude <laughs> done killed 10,000, right? So, he, so, so Saul is unstable. David is unproven. Every time the devil attacks you, you're either unstable or you're trying to prove yourself. Y'all not here with me today. These are the two times 
that the devil always comes into your life. When something is unstable or you are unproven. And so then when you're unstable, then what you do is you try to prove yourself. And anytime you're trying to prove yourself, you have taken your eyes off of what God wants you to do. Some of you all are right now, you are so disappointed because you keep trying to prove yourself. You keep trying to show people you're a good person. You keep trying to prove how much you love them. You keep trying to prove to them that you're on their team and they don't see it and you're frustrated. And now the devil is attacking you because you're unstable. And unproven. You don't believe me? Let's go find Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days. Y'all remember he was hungry. He hadn't eaten in 40 days. And the Bible says that the devil shows up and tests him and tempt him. Why? Because his appetite is unstable and his messiahship is unproven. And so the devil steps in and tempts him and says, prove yourself. Jump off this cliff. And if he would have jumped off the cliff, the devil would have had him because he would have tried to prove himself. And God, Jesus, looks at the enemy and says, for it is written, I don't have to prove myself. Are you with me today? Just touch three people and say, I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to prove to you I'm a good person. If you haven't figured that out by now, that is your problem. I don't have to prove that I'm a Christian by the way I dress and the way I shout. And they shall know we are Christians by our love. Y'all not praying with me today. I don't have to prove I'm rich and go buy shoes I can't afford and buy a house I can't afford. I don't have to prove that I'm somebody just to get the same kind of car you got. I'm waiting on God to bless me so I don't have to look rich. I can be rich. I need somebody in here. Slap your neighbor and say, stop trying to prove yourself. Stop spending all your money on hair and nails and ties and clothes and shoes trying to prove to everybody that you got something. They will know you got something when they see your names in Forbes. Y'all not here with me today. I speak of Forbes blessing over this house that God is about to do something in the area of your finances where you're going to stop dressing rich and be rich. <laughs> you're going to stop drinking wine and own a part of the wine factory. Do I have somebody in here who knows God's about to do a new thing because you're in the fight? Of your life. Don't buy a Toyota this year. Buy a Toyota stock. You're in the fight for the future. And one thing that young people don't know is that your older you is counting on the younger you. Don't let your 35 year old self let your 50 year old self down. Don't get to 50 and don't have any energy and your back is out and your ankles are weak and you got a sciatic nerve all the way down to your foot and, and now you don't have any energy when you could have set your 50 year old self up in your 35 year old body. Slap somebody and say, I'm in a fight of my life. I'm in a fight of my life because my daddy left me in the field and I'm trying not to feel rejected. I'm in a fight of my life because my brothers are talking about me. I'm in the fight of my life because the lion and the bear tried to steal my sheep. I'm in the fight of my life because I'm short and I'm facing a giant, but I will win this battle. Oh, I want to tell somebody, you're going to win. Slap somebody and say, I'm in the fight of my life. I'm an alcoholic because I saw alcohol in my house. I'm addicted to drugs because I was raised by a drug addict. I'm addicted to sex because my mother was promiscuous. I'm in the fight of my life. Oh, and by the way, for those of y'all who don't think that what I said is biblical, the Bible lets us know that when Moses sent the spies to the land, they came back and said, we saw giants. Are y'all not here with me today? They came back and said, we saw giants in the land. And when Moses died, and God says, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead, and he put Joshua in charge, the first thing he told Joshua to do was to go to Anak and kill all of the giants. Now David is fighting a giant because Joshua went there and killed all of the adult giants but left the babies alive. And let me tell you, even your baby problems are going to grow up. Oh, y'all, ain't, it ain't nothing but a little bit. Yeah, that little thing going to grow up and be a big thing. And now giants, watch this. David is fighting what Joshua didn't kill. I got a question for you. What giants are your children fighting that you didn't kill when God told you to? 
Oh, God, I know you ain't going to say man, but I'm preaching for real now. What demons do your children have because you didn't have the courage to deal with it? Are your children going to be poor because you won't budget your money now? What giants are your sons and daughters facing because you killed some of your giants? But not all of them. This is a new year. I decree and declare, kill it all, kill it all, kill it all. Touch your name and say, kill it all, kill it all. I don't care what it costs you, kill it all, kill it all. The, the, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by four. I don't care if you can't sleep, kill it all. I don't care if you don't eat three square meals a day, kill it all. I don't care if you got to go to the movies by yourself, kill it all. I don't care if you got to date yourself, kill it all. I don't care if you got to compliment yourself, kill it all. I don't care if you got to lose weight just to make yourself feel good, kill it all. Get all of that rejection out of you. Get all of that insecurity out of you. Forget what your father didn't say. Forget what your mother did say. Kill it all. The timing, the timing. Okay, so where does the Bible say that the fight takes place? It takes place in a place called Soko. Now, don't forget this. The place where they fight is exactly geographically 10 miles away from Bethlehem where David grew up and 10 miles from Gath where Goliath grew up. Now, don't, don't miss this. So the Bible lets us know the fight takes place 10 miles away from where David lived and 10 miles away from where Goliath lived. Okay. All right, this, this is a slow crowd. All right, let me see. But 10 miles from David, 10 miles from Goliath, which means the fight took place right in the middle Because the devil always shows up when you're in the middle of something. Just when you're in the middle of getting your credit together, here he comes. Just when you're in the middle of getting your life together, here he comes. Slap somebody and say, that, 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 that's how I know I'm almost there because the devil is attacking me. The devil always comes in the middle. The Bible says Peter was walking on the lake in the middle of the night, in the middle of the lake, and the storm came because storms always come in the middle. And let me tell you, whenever the devil attacks you, he's letting you know that you are closer to destiny than you are history. Slap somebody and say, I'm in the middle, which means it's going to take the same effort to go forward as it it is to go back. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody who says, if it is 10 miles backwards and 10 miles forward, I'm going to use all my energy pressing towards the mark. You better tell the devil I refuse to go backwards. If it's going to cost me the same amount of money, if it's going to cost me the same amount of sleep, if I'm going to lose my friends anyway, I'm going to do it going forward. Somebody shout, I'm in the middle. The devil always lets you know how close you are to where God wants you to be because he always attacks when you're in the middle of something, when you're in the middle of reading the book. That's the one that he attacks you in because that's the one he doesn't want you to finish. When you're in the middle of writing your business plan, that's the one that's going to win because that's why he attacks. Whatever he attacks you in the middle, he is letting you know you're on the right track. Who's in the middle of something? He just identified to you. He didn't know it. You're on the right track. Jesus was on his way to the cross. The devil attacked him while he was in between two thieves. Because he always attacks you. Come on, y'all. In the middle. Somebody shout, I'm in the middle. Somebody shout, I'm in the middle of something. I ain't got time to be depressed. I'm in the middle of something. I ain't got time to be broke up about no breakup. I'm in the middle of something. I ain't got time to be walking around here frustrated. I'm in the middle of something. I ain't got time to be going on Facebook trying to comment to everybody. I could have used those 30 minutes to write a business plan. I don't know who I'm talking to, but for every negative comment that you want to reply to online, can you get a notepad and a composition book and write you out a vision? You don't have time to go back and find out what they said about you. You're in the middle of something. I'm in the middle of something. The devil always attacks. Yea, though I walk through the valley 
See, the shadow of death was in the valley because the valley, by definition, is in between two mountains. He always comes when you're in the middle. You got to find out the timing of the fight, but you also got to find out the type of fighter. You got to know who you're fighting. You, you, don't, you don't bring a cannon to guerrilla warfare. See, that, that's why America and our allies, that's why we were losing Vietnam, because we were over there fighting uh, with, with, with reconnaissance, and they were hiding behind trees. Snipers. That, that's why ISIS was a problem, because you, you, can't, you can't blow up people who hide among civilians. See, they changed the game on us. Y'all not here with me yet. They changed the fight. What you got to understand is that the devil is like ISIS. What he does is he hides in the house of people you love. He'll get in people you care about, and he knows if he gets in people you care about, you can't kill them because you're in love. Oh, God, help me in this place today. So he's changed the game, and so now you can't take a butcher knife to a war that needs a scalpel. This is the year for you to surgically remove people. Stop cutting everybody off and just kind of. So when you take a knife and cut everybody off, you're also cutting away the people God blessed you with. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take your circle of five friends and find the one that don't belong and get you a scalpel. Trace around your good girlfriend. Trace around the one you don't really trust, but you can count on. Trace around the one you know asleep with your man, but you won't just have your man around him. And get rid of the one that ain't got no spiritual application. Get rid of the one that don't pray. Get rid of the one that's jealous of you. Get rid of the one that talks about you. Get rid of the one that hates on you. And by all means, get some courage in 2019. Stop firing everybody by text. Ask them where you can meet them. Look them in the face and say, I'm done with you. Will you get some fortitude and stop getting rid of everybody with a direct message and go right to a face and say, I'm done with you. Most people are scared to end relationships. You just starve them, leaving the other person wondering what happened. You got to walk right up to them and say, I can't stand the way you lie. I don't like the way you treat people. You're not growing and we're done. Bye. <laughs> David, if Joshua had completed the job, you wouldn't be fighting. Hebrews says, lay aside every weight. This year, I don't want you taking any giants with you. It's just a small problem. Yeah, but if you leave it alive long enough. It's just a baby bins right now, but it'll be a 550 in a minute. <laughs> That's my dude, man. I love that dude, man. Somebody say the type of fighter. Goliath says, y'all, watch what he says. Y'all choose somebody. Let them come down to me. Y'all pick, any, anybody you pick, I can handle it. He said, choose somebody. Anybody. Pick your best fighter. Send them on down here. So David is the likely candidate. David says, I got this. But watch what David does. Goliath says, come down here. David doesn't go because he understands when you're going into a new year, you got to stop going down to the enemy's level. <laughs> Goliath says, in the valley, see, you don't already know. You don't even know. They already lower than you. They may be taller than you, but they're lower than you. Y'all send somebody down here. David said, I'm not coming down there. I'm not going to come down to your level so you can beat me with experience. Did you hear what I said? I'm not coming down there. I don't know what you have in that valley. I don't know what booby traps you got down there. I don't know what you setting me up for. If we're going to fight, we're going to fight up here. In this next year, you got to stop fighting on their level. Stop conversing on their level. Stop dating on that level. Stop marrying on that level. 
You got to friend up. Stop friending down. Your conversation's got to go up. Come down here. No, I ain't coming down there. You come up here or we ain't going to see each other. Come down here. You've been going to church your whole life, and now you're dating somebody who got you down there. You ain't been all year. You've been tithing your whole life, and you let somebody call you down there. Now you think it's a trick. Oh, now you're quiet. I know I'm preaching now. Come here. Come here, church. Look at all of the good things that your parents and your forefathers instilled in you, and then you get with somebody, and now you down there doing stuff you were never taught. Nobody taught you to talk to people that way. Nobody taught you to treat people that way. You got in a relationship that calls you down. You were raised better than that. Don't miss it. You, heard, you were raised. Your parents raised you. And everybody in here, no matter how good or bad you think your parent was, at least you are here. They could have aborted you. They could have gave you up for adoption. And those of y'all who were given up for adoption, somebody found you. Stop stooping down to their level. You are much better than that. Because you have a non-typical favor. It's number three. Tell somebody, say, I've got a non-typical favor. <laughs> the kind of favor that's on your life, listen, you might not even recognize it, but if you just start thinking over your life, man, listen, the favor that's on your life, the favor, the favor, do I need to, do I need to, Start calling the roll, as the old preacher would say. Or, do, or you, you can use your imagination. The stuff that you walked away from? Yeah. Hmm? The fact that every year you go to the doctor and you get a clean bill of health? Huh? The, 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 that your liver still work? Your lungs still breathing and, huh? You walked away from that relationship, you have crazy, but you ain't all the way crazy. Look, thing, your, your car start up every time you pray? How many of y'all got that kind of car? Lord, I ain't got time to be late. They told me if I'm gonna be late one more time, Lord, when I get this car, please, Jesus, take over the engine. The kind of favor that pays the rent every month and don't know how you're going to do it. You send your children to school Monday through Friday and they make it home every day. That's favor. That's favor. All of these school shootings, that's favor. Because that oil makes the death angel pass over. I'm speaking a non-typical favor. I'm telling you right now, you're getting ready to see it. Cancer's getting ready to skip generations. Lupus, skipping a generation. Hypertension, skipping a generation. And like us hood folks say, sugar diabetes. Skipping a generation. Because you're going to kill your giants, and your children are not going to have to fight Goliath. Joshua, I hate to tell you, Goliath was your responsibility, not David's. Some of you all in the fight of your life, but it's fine because you got you got an oil on you. He anoints my head with oil. Do you know when David was in the field? Now, let me tell you something. This is something that the Lord showed me, Pastor Torrance. If we go back to chapter 16, we find out that David was the armor bearer to Saul, Pastor Reggie. 
Y'all remember he was playing the harp. He was soothing the demons that Saul had inside him because he was emotionally unstable. So God used an unproven boy to minister to an unstable man. He's playing the harp in chapter 16. We get to chapter 17, David is in the field. Which means he's been demoted before he was promoted. Just think about this. A couple of chapters ago, David had been called from the field because he was friends with Jonathan, who's the son of the king. And now he is in the kingdom. He is the armor bearer to the king. Jonathan has relinquished the idea that he would ever succeed his father and has settled on the fact that David is going to have his job. The king couldn't deal with that, so he sends him back to the field. He was demoted. Most people think that he went from the field to the palace. No, he went from the field to the palace, back to the field. Can you trust God when he sends you back after he pulls you up? Oh, I know you can trust God when it's looking good and when you get a new job and you're making $2 more per hour, but can you trust him when the job goes overseas and you have to go back and work for less than you were making? God is good when you're in the house. Is he good in the repossession? God is good when you got a new car, but is he good when they come and take it and you got to go get a cash one? He was demoted. Sister Wright, but here's the deal. When he was in the palace, he wasn't writing no songs. When he got back to the field, he took his pen out and said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Your best work is done in the field. Most people in here don't want the field. You don't want the field. And when you don't want the field, you're actually messing up your blessing. How do I know? The scripture says, I'm blessed in the I'm blessed in the city, and I'm blessed in the field. What you must understand is that God blesses you in the field. So whatever you've been left out of, it's a blessing. Oh, don't y'all miss this. Touch somebody say, being left out is a blessing. Because sometimes being left out, sometimes being the coat that's tied up on the pole, on the street that has never been ridden is the thing that God's going to ride into Jerusalem in on Palm Sunday. Being left out is a blessing. Being rejected is a blessing. Not being picked is a blessing because God is going to send one person to pick you that's going to make up for everything that overlooked you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but slap your neighbor and say, in 2019, I'm going to be somebody's choice. <laughs> In 2019, something good is going to pick me. In 2019, something going to snatch me up. I don't know who I'm talking to. You ought to give three people a high five and say, get ready. Get ready for action. Get ready for choice. Get ready to be picked. Get ready for God. Something good about to happen. I said something good is about to happen. I said something good is about to happen. Some of y'all ain't getting it. Look at your other people. Look at everybody who got a little, a little twinkle in their eye and just look at them. Something good about to happen. Something good about to happen. Something good is about to happen. Something good is about to happen. Something good about to happen. Something good about to happen. Some, all this, all these swords that have been thrown at me, something good is about to happen. Because they that wait on the Lord, something good is about to happen. Something good is about to I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No seed begging bread. Something good is about to happen. Turn around and look at the neighbor behind you. Tell them something good is about to happen. Now make it specific. Something good is about to happen to you. Something good about to happen in your money. Something's good about to happen in your family. Something good is about to happen in your esteem. Something good is about to happen in your vision. Somebody shout good thing. Why? Because you have a non-typical favor. All things work together for your good. Matter of fact, just make it personal and begin to prophesy to yourself. All things work together for my good. 
Somebody say my. My family. My house. My resources. My vision. My patience. Something good about to happen. I can feel it in the air. I can feel it in the air. Something good is about to happen. Let me tell you how I know something good is about to happen. This is how you know. I got two minutes. Let me let, let me let you know how you know something good is about to happen. So right before he gets ready to get into the fight, his brother, Eliab, who was almost picked, your biggest enemy is the one who was almost picked. <laughs> Whoever you get the job over, you better watch for him. Whichever one of your girlfriends in your circle, the one you get married before, you better watch her. Watch what he says. Mary says, um, what you doing here? I'm paraphrasing. If you go back and read it, I promise you I ain't lying. I read it a thousand times. He's like, you supposed to be in the field, cuz. What you up in here for? You ain't one of us. You, you, you a... F <laughs> Lord, I done, you know, I almost said it. I'm telling you, something's wrong with me. Something. But some of y'all get what I'm... How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? All of y'all don't get it? What's wrong with you people? Uh, y'all get it over there? Y'all get it over here? Y'all get it back there? Say, uh, you, you ain't supposed to be in here. We in the house. You supposed to be in the field. Goliath says, y'all going to send this little, here's what the Bible says, ruddy, stinking, freckled face, sheep smelling food to fight. Me? This is how you know you're close. They try to discredit you. David said, I ain't got to prove myself. Let me give you my resume. Uh, first of all, I am the only somebody's around here that kept, that, that kept daddy's sheep. And by the way, while y'all was in there eating grapes, a lion and a bear came and tried to take one of the sheep. And I went over there. I killed the lion. And I killed the bear. Opened up the mouth. Took the sheep back and put it back in the fold. I left the 99. And went after the one. And since I left the 99 and went after the one, God left the seven and came after the one. All I'm trying to tell you is that whatever you want God to do for you second, you got to do for God first. What are you going to leave behind so God can leave something behind to come and get you? He says, the life says, all right, come on now, let's go. He says, all right, take this, this armor. Saul, take this armor. David says, um, I don't fight in nobody else's clothes. I fight in my own stuff. And I don't need your helmet. I don't need your sheaves. See, some of y'all haven't recognized who you don't need yet. You're still dressed in fake friends and dressed in bad relationships. You think you need them to survive. And God gave you everything you needed. He says, I don't need none of it. You ready? Let's mount up then, cuz. David pulled that smooth stone out. He, I can hear him telling him, he said, Goliath, now I got five, but I ain't going to need but one. Start winding it up. I can see Goliath sitting there like. 
What that little thing gonna do? <laughs> Let it go. I see in the spirit, I saw the hand of God. He let the rock go, the rock. God said, <laughs> and God let it land and guided it right on the only thing that was exposed. I came to tell you everything you aim at this year, you're going to hit it. Slap your neighbor and say, everything you aim at, you're going to hit it. Every business you aim at, you're going to hit it. Every goal you aim at, you're going to hit it. Somebody shout accuracy. Ah, I got too much sermon. Let me leave y'all alone. But the Bible says after he hits him in the head, he takes his sword and cuts his head off. Why? Because everything you aim at, God's going to give you. He aimed at the head, and God gave him the head. God told me to tell you in 2019, you're going to get ahead. I don't know who I'm talking to, but for the last three years, you've been behind. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor in 2019. God told me to tell you, you're going to get ahead. Now you praising like you behind, but I need somebody who got the head of your giant to lift up your voice and begin to shout, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I got to leave y'all now, but there's somebody in here who's in the fight of your life. You might ask the question, what do you do when you're in a fight? I got one word for you. Y'all ready for it? Do you know what you do when you're in a fight? Look at your neighbor and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you the thing that you do when you're in the fight of your life. Y'all ready for it? When I decree and I declare that everything that comes up against you shall be condemned. Do I have any winners? All I do is win, and my hands go up, ah! and they stay there, shiny ass. Yes to a win, yes to his way. Do I have somebody? Look at your neighbor for the last time. Shout neighbor. I decree and I declare that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Tell your neighbor everything is going to be all right. Shout out. Ready for them. Look at somebody and shout, neighbor, I don't believe he brought me this far just to leave me. You gotta fight. You have to fight. He's fighting you. He's fighting your body, your mind, your confidence, your children. Don't you stand there and do nothing? Fight back. You deserve to have peace. Stop caring about what people think about you. 
trying to prove yourself and doing everything according. Well, you know, you just got out of a relationship. You shouldn't be in one right now. They don't know what you should be in. Stop proving yourself. That's why you got in the one you shouldn't have been in because you were trying to prove yourself. You don't need all of that. How you know what I need? This ain't the time for that. It might not be the time for you. But you know the rhythm of your life. You know the timing. I wouldn't do it if I was you. Good, because you're not me. But I'm going to do it because the Lord said it. This is a year of expansion, church. I'm going to tell you something tomorrow that's going to blow your mind. And I'm, don't nobody know this but Pastor Torrance he's the only, and Jackie, the only people I told. When God gave me the vision, all year, I had it planned out. And just two days ago, I promise you, this is God's honest truth. The Lord came to me in my prayer, and he told me, double it. He said, double it. I got to be honest, when God said double it, I, I got nervous. And then God showed me somebody who was quadrupling it. And I said, yep, I'm going to double it. I'm going to do exactly what you told me. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And see, double it for you might not mean double for her. It don't matter. Whatever you're left, just double it. You know, it, stop competing. Stop trying to prove it. Just double what he gave you. Wouldn't double what you already have help? You don't need double what he has. You might not be able to handle double what he got. He might not be able to handle double what you have. But whatever you got, the word of the Lord is double. Whatever you aim at, you're going to hit it. If you're in this place today, everybody stand where you are, just the workers. Don't nobody move. I'm going to do this in 30 seconds. If you're in here today, this is the last Sunday of the year. I would not go into the new year unconnected. You got to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season oh don't do it I want to be included Lord. don't do it no say Lord God bless you my sister come on Lighthouse make it a big deal whatever you do This is where I want to grow. This is where I want to raise my family. God bless you. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, 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 whatever you do.
that down. Let me tell you the power of connectivity. Do y'all remember in October? Come here. Come here. Do y'all remember in October we brought this lady up to church? Y'all remember her? And we prayed because the devil had attacked her body with breast cancer. Slap your neighbor and say, cancer free. Slap your neighbor. Slap your neighbor. Come on, y'all ought to be praising God.